I want to take you to spring 2011, Manitoba, Canada. Since the fall, there's been a weather bomb of rainfall in the province. The bloated Assiniboine River is set to burst, threatening communities near and far. And in response, the government diverts water in a controlled breach. It's a one in 350 year event with evacuations and extensive destruction of homes, infrastructure, farmland, and businesses. Now, historically, lawyers and judges could chalk off such exceptional natural disasters as force majeure or acts of God, concepts typically used to excuse liability in such circumstances. But the law of disasters today isn't your grandparents' law. In a series of class actions, Indigenous First Nations and other lakefront communities argued that the government of Manitoba was liable for flooding based on negligence and nuisance. While the First Nations case settled out of court for about $90 million or 60 million pounds, the other case concluded that the government both caused the flooding and was liable in nuisance. Their fascinating cases, reflective of a slowly changing legal landscape in which disasters are more foreseeable, more normal, far from natural, and increasingly subject to tortious liability. My name is David Mattias, and I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Cambridge Faculty of Law, where my work is funded by the Gates Cambridge Scholarship. I came to law later in life, having begun my career as a disaster resilience specialist at Foresight, King's College London, and Save the Children International. A large part of my research and teaching considers the legal life of disasters. It explores how law can both help understand the root causes of disasters and be wielded as a tool for confronting disaster vulnerability. Law is far from the only way to challenge the naturalness of disasters, but it can contribute novel and underexplored insights and instruments to the conversation. I'm keen to continue the discussion.